Uh, I'm Hans Gremme, a graphic designer based in Amsterdam. Um, also in 2008, I started a publishing house, FA Books, which is mainly focusing on photography related publications. And since uh, a year, like last year, we started together with Roger Willems from Roma Publications and John Simons from the former Idea Books and Art Premise, uh, started also Enter Enter a space for books in the, located in the city, in the center of uh, Amsterdam. In getting interested in the field of graphic design, um, if I look back at the things, even to my early childhood, because I was raised in a, in a, in a like very uh, uh, countryside uh, uh, part of the Netherlands, and art or, 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 or museum or these kind of things, uh, was not really like a natural environment for me uh, and uh, books were but they were really like like the one thing uh, I, I spent a lot of time in the library which was a really nice place and for me it was also felt a bit like the door to the outside world to to see to read all these magazines and to uh, to see all these books but but for me at that point uh, is it was not really about how the books looked or how the magazines looked. It was really about the content. For me, I always saw books as a user's object when I was growing up. And this notion of that things and objects, book is an object and can also uh, be like an artist book or like an art form almost, uh, that came later. But for me, at that point, there was a few things coming together because the books I never realized they were so could be so special that I was just reading them and going through them. But uh, I also uh, had these cards with me, which I, at that point these were designed by Kyle Martins, and you could put these in a telephone booth to make phone calls. I always liked them very much. Uh, but to be honest, I, 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 that, I never realized somebody spent time uh, making these. I simply liked the colors and, and the numbers and. I, I didn't really get why some are big and some are small and what's the, 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 the but it, it attracted me. And even before that, I think it's also because I grew up with, uh, uh, with, with um, collecting stamps and um, stamps from all over the world. And I, I always liked the, 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 the Dutch stamps um, from the beginning, like these were, I think from the, a very long time ago and also there's the iconic ones of course from like here uh, from from Jan van Kimpen uh, like the like the really the, the, the beautiful and I, I, I always like this for various reasons um, for uh, mainly because they were always dealing with it's a series so you change a color and you change a number and then you have another stamp um, but also there were other ones which were more um, like um, uh, um, illustrative, uh, th these ones I liked as well very much. They were designed by Otto Treumann. It's a really beautiful series also that they were square and I also started noting that uh, some, some used colors or metallic inks. So I got very, more than the books at that time, I was very aware of that the object, how small even it, it could be. That it, it could be very that it's a very special that somebody was making it because I think with with art books and these kind of, you have to be aware that somebody's not just writing it and publishing it and printing it but also that there's an artistic choice behind it and I, I the, the link with books was came much more later but with these stamps I got it quite quickly maybe even before I was 12 or something for me that was really um, triggering something. I always like to draw and I always like to, but I, I didn't really like to draw from my own creativity, but I like to copy drawings. Like I was, I was drawing Mickey Mouse and these kind of things, but also stranger things and creating these, uh, somehow these, these uh, reproduced worlds and I'm mixing all this, this genres in, in my drawings. But uh, at the time I, I was very aware of, 
in a way, other people's uh, view, uh, artistic views, but it was in a graphic way. Um, it could be posters and it could be, but it was more in, in, this, in this sense that I got interested in the field of graphic design, which later for me, um, but that's much later, and I was really in my late twenties that I started, maybe even with my graduation at, at, um, uh, at art school, uh, I started realizing that a book as a form is a quite unique uh, way of, of uh, telling a story. Uh, and then in the end, I, I then it then felt like I was working at some sort of uh, uh, like a like a total uh, um, uh, body of work, so to say, which was then a book. I, I don't think I would call it an art book of artist book, but it was uh, again maybe also still. It's it's interesting to think about uh, the the book the book as an object. When does it become an artist book? When is it the user's thing and what's the role of the designer? Uh, all these things I'm still trying to figure out and in a natural way by collaborating with people. Uh, because that's the other thing that came together for me, like being interested in, a, in the graphic field and, and in the way of how things were printed. When I was 12 or even younger, there was a new printer in our village uh, who did silk screening. And for, I, I was super intrigued by it. And then at one summer, I asked him, could I maybe work with you for the whole summer? I don't need money, but I'm just curious how this, how this, how this, what, what do you do? And he was making t-shirts and, and, and caps and all these things. And, and he, I think he, he liked it that somebody was also, I mean, he was doing the whole local scene, like the French fries stand on the pizzeria. He was doing all the boxes and all these kind of things, uh, like very small communal work. but. Uh, I, I was always intrigued by this repetition that things are made uh, in in a number of like like identical things in a number of a hundred or fifty or five hundred that you're the whole day doing the same thing and then at the end of the day you have a huge pile of identical t-shirts. For me, that was magical, and I did it all as a, as an idea that you can can make something and you can produce as many as you wish, wish and you only have to invest time. Uh, and with the same effort, yeah, you can also work the whole Sunday on one beautiful drawing. But then I thought, yeah, if you now make a circle and then silk screen it for a hundred times, then then it's it's great. You make a hundred things, and and it's uh, and you can yeah, you're also not so sensitive about it because then you think, oh, maybe it's nice if I glue the circle here on this wall, and you try it and you think, oh, that doesn't really work, and then you put it on a, on somewhere else, or then you give it some away to somebody. And this whole notion of, of making things in a larger print run, uh, I like very much. It's also one of the reasons that I never really know how to look at books uh, with an edition of one or two or something. Then I think, yeah, for me, that's, that's then I think it's not really finished. You, what's the, the, this part of including the, the industrial process is for me a really important part that you translate uh, the, the your your ideas to to the to the system that can reproduce it. Yeah, as I uh, as I mentioned, uh, my background uh, was um, somehow taking a detour because I grew up in, a, in, a, in a, and, I, and I simply didn't know that there was art school. But I felt attracted attractive to attracted to all this uh, um, yeah uh, like a graphic things like, and, and I really like drawing so then I thought then, then I, I heard of something like that you could be like a, a, a like drawing for advertisements or th things like this and there's a very practical um, uh, school for that it's called uh, the, the, the Grafis Lyceum it's graphic uh, uh, it's, it's like a hands-on uh, they, they really teach you a craft so, and then I thought, okay, let's go there. It was in Eindhoven in the South of the Netherlands. Uh, I went there for this four year course. And one year is uh, doing an internship at, at two, two times half a year. Uh, and it, it's, it's really like you, you they, they teach you how everything works in the tradition, but really like the, the very uh, uh, practical uh, nature of the profession. And also there for, for half a year, I was working at a, at a, at a uh, advertisement agency i was i was making drawings of all the i was simply drawing the whole whole whole, whole days making drawings of 
drilling machines or shower shower things or TVs to put in the in the in the catalogs uh, uh, for the advertisement which people receive door to door. That was basically what I was doing. Every Monday I had to clean the dark room because it was in the mid 90s and design studios, at least most of them, they still had a dark room because um, for photograph uh, photographic reproductions and uh, they had a technical camera which, which can reproduce like super sharp or add gradients to it or whatever. And I had to clean the whole thing every week. And but I was intrigued by this, this thing. And at and, and the end of the day, uh, what they did is they made printouts in, in, a, uh, in a super high resolution uh, photographic print. And these printouts were going to the newspapers and they would glue it inside the newspaper. So there was still, it was, uh, uh, you could send a, from the first, like this small Max, uh, this, this IMAX, uh, no, not IMAX, but the, 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 these mini square ones, oh, the classic, the classic Mac. Uh, you could you could send your files to the to the dark room, so it was partly digital but also highly analog world. Uh, and I was very intrigued by this whole photographic uh, uh, room. But it also in the last year, and then a teacher of mine, uh, Ton van Tal, um, he he told me, why don't you consider going to art school, like a uh, academy, art academy? And I said, yeah. Yeah, I, I, they offered me a job at a design agency as well, but uh, but somehow this this was in my mind. So, but then I thought maybe I should apply for photography. So then, uh, and I, I I didn't have that much work, but I had one box with photos, and then I went to the academy in Breda, and there was one uh, teacher there who looked at my work and then added a few photographs. He said, "Yeah, this is." You should come. You should do it. And and uh, so then, then I started there. And then I realized in the first year because I still thought I wanted to study photography that I was talking to a lot of people again about what they were doing and and why. That I and again also when I was drawing when I was a kid I was always drawing other people's drawings somehow and then making mixing them. But uh, and and I also. This, this whole creative part uh, or creating. And if you're an artist, you have to create from scratch. You have to start with zero. And then this was somehow, I've never really felt comfortable with that, but I noted that I like talking to people about their work and also uh, adding ideas to it. Saying, oh, but if you're doing this, then maybe this is also nice. I read something about this and this technique and can you use that as well? Then I found out that, that that's more my natural role and uh, then I thought, okay, if I then do graphic design, I can still do something with photography if I want, because it was also part of the curriculum anyway. But nevertheless, uh, and then I can also ask other people to maybe join me if I have to make a book or a poster to do the photography or to collaborate. So that's at the art school, this whole collaborative part was, was much more important. And then after art school, uh, I went to the Werkplatz Typographie, which was then uh, run with uh, Karel Martens, of course, was one of the main forces behind it, and Wicca Bierma. Uh, and Wicca Bierma was, when I was there, he was leaving and then Arma Mavis came there. And then if you have Karel Martens, Arma Mavis and Wicca Bierma, that's really three completely different opinions about design. And that shaped me, I think, because I know I, I, it's of course not if you're at art school, you're there to please teachers or whatever, but it's also, the influence, if you're all in the same thinking in the same direction, they influence you nevertheless in that direction. But but if you have these three forces, which are all very outspoken in their own field, then you have to come up with your own idiom and, and, and uh, ideas. Otherwise, you, you go crazy. And also, at that point, I was also older and not so, finding my way uh, in the field. And, and I was uh, uh, exploring this and uh, that was for, for me very valuable. Also in my career, my education, I always felt that I was on the border of a lot of things. Like here it was switching teachers with, with, with Wicke and, and Alma, but I got both of them. So that was great. And also technical, I was raised at the practical school, uh, the, the, the Grafis Lyceum 
in a very practical level, making all this manual analog things for printing, uh, but also already raised with computers because that was the, the, the obvious that that was the future. So in a lot of ways, I feel very lucky that I was on the border of a lot of different developments. And I think uh, that is also something which I still carry uh, very prominent throughout my own work. And that's something, uh, if it's about techniques and, and analog, uh, and, and, but also um, uh, in, in, in a lot of other ways. I think that's, 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 for me, I always thought it was, a, I felt lucky to be there at, the, at that point, at that time. When I started uh, as a book designer, um, when I was just graduated, I was working a lot in the field of architecture and, uh, and for museum and these kind of things, more institutional uh, work. Uh, but then a friend of mine asked me if I felt like making a magazine dealing with photography. Um, that was my introduction to FA actually, because uh, in the beginning FA was a platform. Uh, it was called FA Photography. And then later we started publishing book and then books and then it transformed into FA Books as well. Uh, but in the beginning, it was mainly about organizing activities, meetings, and uh, uh, making exhibitions. I was happy that, 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 that I got introduced in this field again, because I, I have a weak spot for photography also from my personal point of view and my, my background. Uh, but also later I realized that, that photography is really interesting, uh, has a really interesting relation with, 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 with books and with uh, reproduction in general, because um, uh, it's the nice thing with photography is if you make a photo, it's still invisible. It's a digital file or is it, is it, it's, a, uh, it's a slide or a negative, basically it's one of these two things. But you have to come up with a way to make it visible to the world. Uh, it can be that you put a slide on a table, then you can of course see it, but that's, I see that as an action and then you make an installation. Uh, or you, uh, the digital file you can show on the website, but that's also a translation of the or, uh, original file. Uh, so whatever you do, you always have to come up with a way to present it and to, uh, and to you can put it on a wall, of course, framed, uh, like Stefan is here. Uh, Stefan Keppel, but you have to you have to come up with something. Otherwise, it stays invisible. And that's really different than, for instance, with painting. That if you make a painting, then yet you could say that's original painting. And then if you put it in a book, you have to photograph it and reproduce it. And then in, then you have this discussion about original on the wall and reproduction in the book. And with photography, that's totally not the case, because you can the you have to go through more or less the same amount of reproduction little steps to put a photo on the wall and to frame it and everything or to put it in a book it's it's the same file often uh but then the one time it goes that direction the other one so realizing this after making a few books based on photography then i thought but then it's you could really see that the the, the photo is a uh, in the book, it's, it's, it's like original print, but that means that the book is also uh, easy to consider like, uh, like original artwork. Um, and somehow this, uh, it, it didn't really change my, my way of working, but, but it sort of underlined what I was already working on and working with. This is the first book I made with Stefan Keppel. Reprinting the City, it's from, I think, 2008, if I'm correct. Working with Stefan after this book, uh, he always photographs cities and, and, and working with the surfaces of the city, like this is the, the sea, and um, it's, it's uh, always, a, he triggers me to, to explore the field of, uh, 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 of reproduction because he's working both digitally He's, he's photographing digitally, but he's also making very analog prints like Xerox prints and copying and these kind of things. So that's very uh, graphic uh, way. And also like here you can see that this is printed with a, with a bit crappy printer even, but he has a soft spot for those things as well. And he's very much into this uh, uh, flaws. And, 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 and if you, for instance, see the back of the book, it's a sheet, uh, the paper is black, but I somehow, it's, it's a torn out sheet 
but then the, the borders are silt screened in white. So it also plays with this is printed, but it's this is the image. So you print the net rest of the space to show the image. And the whole book is full with these kind of uh, uh, playfulness. And there's parts uh, printed uh, black on black to create this bit ghostly images. So it's, it's exploring all these fields of, uh, yeah, it's safe and I remember with this first book we talked about, yeah, you don't have a copy machine, but, but we do have an offset press and, and that gives a lot of other possibilities as well. So uh, we always were exploring to find, to, to really make new works, uh, showing also older ones, like this is simply an image, but show, also creating works, especially for the book, and they only exist in the book as well. And yeah, this is an example, it's quite extreme uh, uh, collaboration. Uh, I did uh, last year with uh, Andres Gonzalez, uh, it's called American Origami. Uh, it's about um, uh, uh, high school shootings in the United States. Um, Andres was, was working around this team for many years. He uh, visited uh, a lot of locations where this happened, like uh, one of the most uh, well-known is, of course, Columbine. It's also one of the first, and, but also Parkland, uh, uh, Sandy Hook, of course, uh, and, and, and Utah, uh, Utah. And then he, he, he visited, he revisited the cities and he photographed all these landscapes, like these. Uh, these. And, but also he interviewed a lot of people which in one or another way were uh, affected by, by the shootings. Could be a girl who was uh, in the room uh, or in the school when the shooting started or the one guy is quite uh, triggering or um, a quite intense interview about a guy who survived as one of the few in his class. And uh, he has this uh, survivor's guilt. Did you think, well, why did I survive and all my friends uh, died and, it, it, and, and and there's also a father who lost his daughter and these kind of interviews are there as well so it's quite loaded document it's quite intense uh, but also an important part was that uh, he went Andres went to the archives and after a tragedy like this happens then people create this kind of uh, uh, scenes or people come to to support each other but they want to leave something. It could be like a teddy bear, it could be flowers or little artifacts. And he also photographed uh, or was doing a lot of research to these kind of artifacts. And uh, first I made a book which was showing them all alongside, but they were, that was, they were weakening each other instead of making each other stronger. So then I thought if we, this book is bound in such a way, I. I came up with it more or less by accident, but it, it's, this is a file of paper and then it's folded like this, but it's bound, it's bound here actually, which creates then, you can open every page and then there you can see all the artifacts. So you, you open the landscapes and there is the, the other information. And we, we really like this. It's also creating, like it's a very thick book, one of the thickest photo books uh, I, I published and, and, and designed, but it's not like a posh book or whatever. It feels because it's it's really like a folder that you put on your desk, and it's 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 about administration almost. And also this this form is, yeah, as you can see, if I do it like this, it almost falls out of my hand. So you have to the best way is to sit down and go through it, and you can easily ignore the one layer, and then you go through it as a as a more or less normal book, and then you can decide to open it up. Uh, but then it's, it takes an effort and you have to, but that's okay. The book, it's, it, I like it if a book is, it's a bit uncomfortable book also to use, and, and, uh, but that's okay. It's, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't have to be all like easy or whatever. Um, uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's even better if things are a bit annoying maybe even. Uh, and, and I think if, if there's something which, which is a little bit itching or if it's a little bit tweaking that I think it's 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 yeah you you maybe a lot of people think oh this is way too complex for me that's fine but I think the people who do take the effort to go through the book 
and to engage with it, then I, they, it will stick with them longer and, and, and maybe even has a lo more long-term effect than, uh, than if it's all easy or something you already know. And, and, and that's, uh, I think, an important part of, uh, um, uh, of, of what I like to make. And that's also, if I collaborate with somebody so closely, then uh, it's just me and Andres in, in this case. And also because I'm the publisher, makes things very easy. Because if we think this is a good idea, then we don't have to go to, to do a meeting with the board of directors or whatever to convince them that this is worth their investment or something like this. Uh, so that's, that's also one of the reasons that I like and also started even FA books that I really believe in creating uh, un, uh, like, like books without compromise. Like if you think this is it, then just do it and, and then that's it. And uh, if there's a lot of people on board, then before you know it, you end up a bit in the middle of the road. Um, and it's, yeah, then everybody is satisfied. But then I think the, the, the cutting edge is, is a lot of times smoothened. Uh, so that's, that it's a bit gone. And with all this, like a lot of times in my work, I, I balance a bit on this. Uh, this is also an editorial decision to, to work like this. And you experience the work very different. Uh, with Stefan as well, or, or this example of uh, Nicola Nunziata, he, he, he uh, was going through an archive in Italy, uh, a photography archive, and then he challenged me to, to, uh, to, to make a book in which I use his work as a starting point to create new uh, edits and to create new bodies of work. So I started partly sometimes overprinting images and these kind of things. And then he was reacting to that again with new material. And then this was all done um, uh, with a, uh, over a computer and, and talking. And uh, well, I don't think we, we really called. We just always were emailing ideas back and forth. But that's also like a really beautiful way of collaborating. And, and uh, um, I, I, I like it very much. And I think also here together, we, we really curious it also created, uh, this is also for me a very important collaboration because it's, uh, uh, yeah, this is really like a, I do this and then he reacts, it's, it's like ping pong. And um, yeah, creating uh, also uh, like a new body of work, basically. There's one pile, which is maybe interesting as a, I, I collected these three books, like Ramia by Petra Stavas, Edges of the Experiment, by uh, Maria Jose Jorgerius, and um, which is a two volume book. And for me, th these books are less about design and more, uh, at least my, my, my work, uh, more about editing. Because uh, this, this book, it's about uh, the two brothers, their great grandfather was an important uh, a, a reverend in, in, in the Catholic uh, or like Protestant movement. And um, he traveled to the, America, to the United States and they followed his, his footsteps, they traced his footsteps. But here text is very important. And then we, I came up with a concept to, to make a, a, like, a, like linking, making an important combination be between text and photo, uh, photography. And uh, also the reason that it's bilingual is also conceptual because people are still speaking Dutch and English at the same time. With, with Ramia, it was a bit the same. This was really about this took us, um, uh, took us a, a few years to make. Uh, and also when, I, when we started working on this book, it was still not finished, the content. But we just started and we started editing and there's a lot of layers circling around one person, um, trying to get a grip on who this person actually was. Ramia is a, is a lady who was a landlord of the photographer. She passed away and on the funeral, uh, Petra noticed that a lot of people had completely different stories about who she was. Even her name was, was debatable. Uh, and, um, and she photographed her when she was still studying, but she collected, started to, in a way, get a grip on a person. And when we were working on this book, it was really growing and it was also helping her a lot with this research about who she actually was. And Edges of the Experiment by Marie Jose for me was a very important book for a lot of reasons. But one of the main ones is that it's, um, 
uh, yeah, I was uh, very fascinated by the whole topic of the American landscape and these kind of things. But also, uh, this is one of the uh, books that I, I even applied for a grant, which I got to do research for over a year to make this book. And uh, research really in a, in a way that, that, that I was, uh, it's a two volume book. This book is uh, showing the works with, with, with the captions about the works. It's very research driven photography. Um, it's about the, the man altered landscape in California. But there was a, there's so many other stories to say about this landscape, which are all related to her work, but it's sort of like back background. So you can know, you can know the little, the, 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 the brief summary, and then you can understand the work really well. Uh, so it's for me making books is it, it's about collaborating on the one hand and it's about and collaborating is for me about asking questions and also having open dialogue so to to talk there's no hierarchy it's not that okay you made the images and i know everything about design no it's about what do you think if it's hard cover or short, short cover soft cover or um, about the size and all these things are really discussed while working because i don't know if i start a book i never know uh, what it should be so i just start we, it's, the good thing is then if you start talking about it then you both find out um, what it what it can be and what it then in the end should be and i think the starting point a lot of times is that i know that that we uh, that we decide on, on okay we're going to make a book so it, it, we know that the result will be a book a lot of times sometimes even that is a uh, change but that's really only a few few, few times um, but normally that's the one thing you know but then of course a book can be so many things it can be big it can be small it can be soft cover hard cover and I, I, if I look at work then a lot of times I know what kind of book it shouldn't be so I know oh, that this shouldn't be a hard copy. This shouldn't be like with Andres Gonzalez. It shouldn't be like a table, uh, uh, like, a, like a coffee table book, a bit posh, a bit chic. No, this should be more uh, like, a, like a pile of paper. But that's very abstract. And then I started talking about it. And also by talking about it, it helps me to shape these ideas that you think, okay, but this shouldn't be like this. But is this then the better alternative? And like a lot of things in, 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 in graphic design uh, are quite easy because it's 50-50. Like uh, it's big or small, it's a soft cover, it's hard cover, it's serif, it's all serif. So it's, it's, it's not that complex. Uh, uh, but then, uh, but of course, all these 50-50 this choices, they leave you up with numerous, like endless possibilities. But I like to trigger these, these things. Uh, I, I cannot oversee the whole the whole process, the whole body of work, the whole everything at the first time. So I tackle all these questions one by one. And then, uh, it's, and then it's quite simple because then it's again, this 50-50 questions going left, going right. And then you go right and then you completely forget about left. It's not, you, I mean, of course you knew you didn't choose it, but then, because there will be a lot of other choices on the right. I don't know if I do left or right. I always mix those things up. And, and then in the end, you somehow determine, okay, then this is not it, this is this, is this. And then you end up with, with what's left uh, and, and then you try to make that work. And if it doesn't work, you can always go back a few steps to see, hey, here we actually, we went from a big book to small book, but maybe that was not such a good idea. Uh, and then you can reconsider that and try to reshape it. But then you do it because, for a reason and not because you think, yeah, I just like big books, but then you try to make a small book and it doesn't work for some reason. And then you will try to make it work in the bigger book. And, but then that, that's for me, there's a big difference that you, you try to do it because of a reason and not just because you like it or not. A lot of things are like it or not things are subjective, of course, but uh, you have to, it's, it's a balance of, of how, how to maneuver through all these kind of, to this minefield of choices. It's on the one hand very uh, practical, like uh, also how I, I, I experienced myself uh, based on my education with also the teachers I had, like Roker Willems, who was already part of Roma Publications, Jaap van Triest, who collaborated with Karel Martens, Karel Martens himself. So it's, it was for me, for me very natural to be also uh, 
be around artist books and to I, I saw so many different views of course maybe some others that were hugely influencing me already uh, on art school uh, seeing that and Emma Bohm of course all these this this crazy books about that you think wow this is what a book can be and it's not just about reading it's really adding something maybe even elevating the content maybe making a book which is maybe sometimes even better than the content that was for me like a really new perspective and I think uh, that's we, we are lucky in the Netherlands I think with with a very few of these super clear examples which I just named also and then it's it's somehow easy to follow in that tradition not not literally making the same things but it's about the attitude about that that, that i grew up uh with, with with seeing designers working on books and questioning the medium of the book at the same time and and that was uh quite radical for me and 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 to to see that and I, but i like that attitude and Sometimes I think maybe it was going a bit too far or to, to maybe even a bit too less far. And, but I started to create an opinion about what a book could be and what a book, what, what I thought, uh, so, so, uh, uh, how a book could, could evolve. So that was for me very natural. And, um, and the nice thing is that I don't think it's no longer limited to the Netherlands itself, because for instance, Carlo Martens, Emma Boom, uh, Linda van Deursen, uh, they also teach at Yale, and there's, there's uh, people uh, at Yale, of course, there's a quite international community also from, from Japan, Korea, but also uh, there's workshops, and, and I was invited also once to go there, and then also these kind of things that you organize now. I don't think that's design in that sense, if it ever existed, how people, I think, uh, if, if people talk about it, uh, I think it's now, it's, it's more like globally. Also, uh, the, the schools like Werkbaas Typografie, when I went there, it was a uh, quite small scale, but now it's, it's really like international place and people come there from all over the world and a lot of times go back uh, after graduation. Uh, so it's somehow now yeah, like, a, like a virus going everywhere in a good sense. So, and also fairs like New York Art Book Fair, Tokyo Art Book Fair, uh, off print these things all help that 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 that's where i also see the books and i feel very related to publishers from switzerland england belgium uh, the, the united states and so that's that's i don't have this notion anymore that it's somehow restricted to border but i think the 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 fruitful um, environment which is in the Netherlands it of course it helps to there's always new young people uh, uh, exploring the same path but I think it's it's, it's it, I hope it's 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 everywhere uh, in this sense and that we can all help each other exploring these new paths Yeah, I think what's, uh, with the current situation, of course, with, with, uh, with, with this COVID, uh, it's also the reason that we're now talking like this. Uh, I think this, it, it will have a big impact, I think, on art books, uh, in good and bad. I think the, one of the main primary concerns is, uh, is, is, is the, you can make books, but also they have to go into the world. So, and I think distributors and well, more bookshops and therefore also distributors uh, are struggling in that sense. And I think they should get all the support uh, they need. Uh, and um, yeah, of course, it's it's you can. The strange thing is when people have to stay inside and they read start reading much more. So the book sales were going up globally, but a lot of them were going through Amazon and these kind of things. And I found out that, that I, I have my local bookshop. It's, it's really here, like a few hundred meters away. Uh, and, but I also assumed that they were closed when there was this whole lockdown. But then I called them and said, yeah, I am looking for this book. I said, oh, great, just wire me the money and I will drop by. And then 10 minutes later, he was on his bike in front of me, which made me realize that actually, the, and then I started doing a little bit of research, but a lot of bookshops were quite creative and really willing to um, uh, to explore paths or to open a web shop all of a sudden and, and, and start delivering all these kind of things. So, and what I like, the good thing about this is that it's, that people still manage to 
survive, and, but I think they can only survive if people buy more local at the bookshop. So if you're in Tokyo, go to there. And, 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 and if you live in New York, please go to, I don't know, McNally Jackson or whatever. And, uh, but it's, it may, if you're in Amsterdam, please visit your local stores. But what I also liked that this this notion that 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 the world can be also very small and that does not everything has to be global in that sense. I think that's a very important notion uh, for um, which is a good thing which happens in, through, due due to these restrictions. So uh, I think this whole realization of keeping things simple and also on a smaller scale, I, so it 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 makes things. It's not all, it makes you realize what's important and what's not important and how you should deal with that. And I hope in the long run, but the one thing which is, I think, and also I, I really, it's important to like also underline the importance of book fairs. And also, of course, what you are developing now to try to create an alternative and to create an inspirational environment. Uh, even with all this merchandise which is created, which I really love. And, and I'm also uh, I'm hoping that these kind of things show uh, are some sort of alternative uh, or maybe not, but the way I see it is that it's, I, I really enjoy participating, uh, but that this, what you create, which I hope that you maybe also create something which in the end it's valuable to consider even if the real book fairs are starting that you think it's great actually to have this online platform with all these talks and with all these things and it can happen also maybe next to the real book fair so to say and then you have a virtual maybe not virtual book fair but virtual pl platform with content which is available for more people than just only the visitors that's a bit what i hope in the end that we can pick out okay this was bad let's forget about it this was actually maybe better also for the planet and also for traveling or whatever. So let's keep that and let's evolve there. And I think that's, that I really, really hope, but yeah, I know, I know people are stupid, but <laughs> I really hope that, uh, that people, that, that we can learn as a community from this. I have good hopes for that because, uh, uh, yeah, it's, I think a lot of people experience it like this, that it's not all bad. I mean, practically. Uh, so I hope we can evolve into something better than we, we were not bad before, but I think we could do better on a lot of levels. So I think we evolve in a, in a little bit better version of ourselves uh, because of, and then it was at least all this, this, this things which happened the past year and which will continue for a little bit, I think, or longer, maybe even that at least it was worth it that, that we came out better. I mean, I sound like a politician now, but that's, uh, that's really also really what I genuinely hope. And uh, yeah, makes life easier and better. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs>